What's up guys, PJ here, with the first devlog in 7 months, not bad at all. I gotta warn you, this one's probably gonna be all over the place. What you're about to see is basically all the scattered, mostly engine changes that I did over the past half a year, all cobbled together into one devlog video. If you guys remember back in my previous videos, one of the problems I had that kept cropping up was related to importing 3D models into my engine. And this was totally not due to bad decision making on my part or anything. Basically I have this custom format for 3D models for my engine in which the data is stored in such a way that pretty much no processing is required when loading it and it can be uploaded straight into the GPU memory, making it very fast. This in itself is fine, in fact I think almost every engine does this. What is not fine is the way in which models are getting converted into that format. The program that I was mainly using and I'm still using is 3ds Max. I kind of naively thought that I would never use anything else but 3ds Max. I didn't even consider the fact that I might even want to use like asset store models or something like that. So what I decided to do is write an exporter for Max so I could export models directly from the program into the format that my engine needed. And now as it turned out this really ended up being a bad decision for a couple of reasons. First of all the plugin itself was super buggy. Like it would work for some models and then suddenly it would break down and produce like garbage or some ancient eldritch hell spawn and then each time this happened I'd have to take time to investigate and solve the bug and then sometimes I would solve one bug and then another one would appear or reappear it was just annoying to deal with and then secondly as I already mentioned I didn't take into account the possibility that I would ever want to use a model from the asset store or even that other people would want to create models for the game and in fact a while back someone did reach out to me and asked if he could create models for the game hey man you have four fingers on your human so this smile is not a big problem Right? No, that deer is dope as hell. We put it in. He made this nice deer model and shark model. I still haven't had the opportunity to put it into the game yet, my bad. See, this is why I'm reluctant with accepting help from other people. Anyway, shout out to KMC Ozzy for making these models, I do very much appreciate it. Let's see, where was I? Oh yeah, so I would have to import all of those models into 3ds Max, then re-export them as an OMDL, which is my custom format, and then hope that nothing breaks. But, spoiler alert, things broke like every time. So after one screw up too many, I did what I really should have done from the beginning and I made an importer for my editor instead. Now in the editor I have this dialog where you can convert from pretty much any model format like FBX, GLTF, Collada to the engine's format. It uses the as imp library in the background so it supports pretty much any format you could ever need. In addition to just importing, it has some added benefits like being able to import multiple model files and then merging them into one. In that case, it reads the mesh data from the first model and then all the animations from the other models are added onto it. It matches the bones by name and does some simple animation retargeting. This is extremely useful when using, for example, Mixamo. For those that don't know, Mixamo is a really nice tool where you can upload character models and not only can you automatically let it rig them for you, it can also apply a huge library of motion captured animations and it also works on models with an existing rig so it's very useful. This is not sponsored by the way, but Adobe if you're watching, my DMs are open. The one caveat it has is that you can only export one animation at a time, so having this merging feature directly in the engine is really nice. Especially since it allows me to easily combine my custom animations with ones from Mixamo and stuff like that. So all those things that I just mentioned was stuff that I did before I took a break. Now when I came back to working on the game after having taken said long break, I really wanted to work on something simple to get back into it. One of the first things that bothered me when I loaded up the game again was the fact that the player was still naked. So I wanted to work on some character equipment first, but since that's kind of an extension of character customization in general, that is what I started with. In terms of customization, the game won't really go over the top, it's gonna be quite basic. The goal is basically to have the player be able to customize the hairstyle, the hair color, skin color, eye color and pupil color, and the underwear of course. In order to achieve that, I had to cut up the model into different parts so I could customize them separately. The hairstyles for example are all different sub meshes which I can enable and disable at runtime. I then tried to do something similar for the armor and while some parts of the equipment like weapons and helms can simply be separate static meshes that are attached to the model, the armor itself needs to bend along with the body itself so it needs skinning information as well. And at first I was wondering if there wasn't some hacky way in which I could make this process less annoying, like maybe generating the armor on the fly based on some kind of high texture. But 
the more I started looking into it, the more complicated I realized this was going to be, so I ended up not doing that. In the end, I just modeled most of the parts separately, like the torso, legs, and boots and so on, by duplicating the base parts of the model and applying an extrusion modifier. And then after I did this, I realized I forgot to UV unwrap everything, so now I had to do it all over again. Since I could have just unwrapped the base model and then duplicating it would have brought most of the UVs along with it, but yeah, I apparently didn't have the foresight for that, so that's that. You know, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. This is actually the first model for the game that I've even had to unwrap. All the other models don't use textures at all, they just use vertex coloring. I'm thinking right now I'm probably gonna have to do some shenanigans in the UV map to get that flat shaded one color per polygon look I'm going for, but that sounds like a problem for future me. So once I got the customization working with hard-coded values, the next step was to make a character creation screen. I don't think I've actually touched the main menu since the very beginning of this devlog series, so I thought might as well give it a bit of a facelift too. What you're seeing right now is extremely work in progress, it has a lot of placeholders all over the place. If you're wondering what's up with the logo, I decided to name the project Starfall for the time being. It's highly likely that this will change, it's just a working name that I thought would be better than just referring to the game as the game. Also, the logo itself is actually AI generated by Midjourney by the way, but back to what's on the menu. For the background, instead of just a static picture, I now have this live scene thing going on. It's just a block out for now. I kind of want to try recreating this concept art that I found in my low poly 3D art style, but I didn't get around to that for this video, so that's something you'll have to wait for. As far as the UI itself goes, if you're noticing that it looks completely inconsistent with what I did in the previous devlogs, that's because I actually don't know if I like that style very much yet, so I wanted to try some different things. In the end, I will make everything look nice and consistent, of course. While I was working on this, I did also make some notable improvements to the engine's UI system. For example, the UI nodes can now have a real-time Gaussian blur background effect, which is pretty cool. This entire menu actually is made without any kind of textures, apart from the logos. Uh, the appearance of the buttons and stuff is controlled completely by style sheets. And speaking of style sheets, while they were a very nice addition to the UI system, I wanted to take it another step further this time by adding the possibility of creating UI components directly from XML documents. So now you can build up UI hierarchies in XML and apply styling using Orbit style sheets, and you only need C++ to do the scripting and the interfacing with the game logic. In the future, one more addition I would like to make is adding Lua scripting into that mix so that we can do the behavior scripting outside of C++ as well. And the only thing we need to do from the C++ side is expose some kind of minimal game API like you know create new profile join game host game and functions like that which you would then call from Lua. Essentially what I want to have is kind of my own version of the HTML CSS JavaScript holy trinity in the form of XML OSS and Lua. So far we only have the XML and OSS, but overall I'm already quite happy with how much they're reducing the amount of boilerplate C++ coded that's needed to create UIs. So that's really it as far as changes go, those have been the most important ones. I haven't really done any significant gameplay stuff, as I said I kind of wanted to ease back into it. Um, I did add this asset store slime NPC, which doesn't do anything yet whatsoever. I added this mesh explosion effect when creatures die, I thought that was kinda cool. Oh, and the player can actually die now, even though the only way to take damage at the moment is by entering a special command. I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like or even subscribe as it helps me a lot. For the next one, I'm probably gonna try something a bit different, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye bye.